Hey, welcome back to Vice Grip Garage. Today's a really exciting day. We've got Mike and Brad in the shop, and they're not going to be setting up just one, but three wildfire lifts, including the double wide. That's right. Two rigs up, two rigs down. Let's get started. Well, first of all, guys, thanks for coming down. Appreciate it very much. Thanks How was for the trip? Us. Not bad. Piece of cake. Nice. Beautiful, beautiful country. Muggy, overcast, just for you guys. Of course. <laughs> so, first call I made when, I, when we got the shop here was to Wildfire, of course. And I said, hey, I got a new place, want to get a couple lifts. And you asked, you know, what's the layout, what's the design? You guys are really good at making suggestions and things like that. You had mentioned to save money and space, instead of doing like three or four lifts, we could do this double wide lift, right. basically. And that's two cars up, two cars down, mm -hmm. is that right? Correct. Awesome, so can you tell us a little bit more about this beast? I see some parts back here, it's Yeah, huge. absolutely, so you have a great garage, you have great space, but as we all know, we tend to have too many cars, too many toys, and it fills these spaces up before you know it. So that double wide, what's really neat about that from a storage standpoint, as Derek mentioned, you put two up, two down and it's going to be in a smaller more compact space than say two single wide lifts and an added benefit is we don't have those posts down the center so we get rid of those posts down the center which makes it a more open drive-through area so i mean i could put a boat or motorcycles or whatever below anything you want below it's got six foot nine inches of clearance when it's at the top so trucks boats motorcycles all of it this is really cool plus i see aluminum inserts outside and we can also create a platform up top for Correct. storage or whatever. Yep, so if you want to put the zero turns and things like that, you can get those up and out of the way, different seasons, of course. Should we start with the double lift to kind of get this in the corner? And then we've also got the XLT, which is the, was it extra wide, extra tall, extra everything? Pretty Correct. Much. Correct. And then we've also got a standard lift as well, but we're going to start with the bigger one get it in the corner here. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna start unpackaging everything. We're gonna start getting our cross beams in place, our posts, pretty similar to when we did the XLT in your other okay. garage. It's just quite a bit bigger and a little bit heavier, but two guys can absolutely tackle it. are ready to put the posts and the cross beam up. I'm told this is the hardest part of the whole installation, but I have a feeling these fillers are gonna make it look really easy. You and a buddy should be able to do this, no problem. <laughs> That's awesome. Making progress. All the lifts have these same pieces here. Same design around here. They'll talk a little bit more about that. I'm gonna pass you off to Brad. He's gonna explain this whole system here and how it works. All right guys, now that we got the first set of posts and cross beams set up, what you can notice is when you take a look at that post from edge to edge, we have a two inch camber in the center. The reason we do that, think of an empty semi trailer that might be going down the road. You've got a little bit of camber in the center so that under load, when we fill that up because of the span, it's gonna come down a little bit more neutral to be flush so you don't get some sort of inverse curve that just doesn't look correct. So you can see that when we come from the angle, you've got that little bit of a camber there. Although this looks pretty intimidating, obviously it's a heavy duty lift, it's a double wide, but two guys, an engine hoist, some dollies and basic hand tools, that's all you need. These guys are putting this together very quickly and they even package this in such a manner that it makes it easier to assemble as well uh, on the dollies just make sure you block them up you'll see and figure that out engine hoist rolls right under they'll lift these up now and just start dropping them in there's four of them that are going to come all the way across and then we're down to what cables cables pump, pump and that's pretty much it lift the cars and start lifting cars yeah well, those guys are working on the lift. I'm trying to stay out of the way. So I'm over here wrenching on independence. 
We got the Procharger off before this was loaded up on transport. I'm going to pull the valve covers, take a look at the valve train, do a compression test, kind of do a health status, if you will. And I need to start designing a new fuel system because we had really bad fuel slosh. This is my third tank, and this one is not working either. I believe I have the solution. It's got trap doors and baffles and all sorts of magical stuff. I was trying to stay with the Holly pump, which was kind of limiting which fuel cell I could run to. We're going to switch over to an aeromotive pump, but now I have to run all new lines, obviously a new pump. We're going to have a new regulator up here. And then I also want to run my fuel lines differently. Right now this has a front crossover and a feed on each rail in the rear. All of this it's going to have to be redesigned, so I'm going to start taking a look at that as well. Maybe even get this thing fired up today. Boop! Oh, full of water. I'll be dipped. Poor girl's been sitting outside. These guys are getting ready to flip this over. They got one on over here. This is kind of a technique they're using with the straps. When they lift it, it's going to roll. But while this is upside down, I want to show you this here. All this is plated underneath. And a majority of lifts don't have this extra plate in there, right? Correct. Both inside and outside. Inside and outside. Yep, so 16 feet, just shy of 16 feet of gusseting on this side and this side on each individual runway. So you're talking 128 feet of gusseting. Wow. This here lightning hose was just off, laying right there. And that burned all the way through. So clearly that wasn't firing. And then it sounded like an opposing cylinder might be down over here but all of these lightning hoses seem to look fine so we'll do a compression test here in a few so you guys watch and we can have a little bit of fun here you can pause it bleep bloop down below what cars you think I'm gonna put up here first or what do you think I should put up here first some of you may not even know what vehicles we actually brought down to Tennessee I also wanted to mention once we get the lifts into place relatively where I think I need them. The nice thing is they're all in casters, so we could shuffle them around really easy, maximize our space here. Also give you a little bit of a shop tour. We've done a lot of work since some of you have first seen this. Floors, lighting, outlets, some work outside, drain tile, gravel, basically everything we needed to do to get in here and get back to work. So I'll show you that here at the end of the day as well. So now that we have one, two, three of these runways in place. We're about to put the fourth one in. But a common question we get from customers when they're unpackaging their double is where are the casters? And this is generally one of the last steps. So due to space constraints within the packaging, we have to kind of Tetris everything in to get it all to fit. Your casters will be between these two particular runways. Same with your pulley cover. So everything will be in there, it just takes a little bit longer to get to. These guys are hauling, they're getting the cables put in real quick. They got these center inserts put in. So you get your vehicles up, you can jump on out. These just sit across here, but I wanted to show you these. We were talking about storage earlier. We could throw these inserts in. Moses are bright, hurting my eyeballs. These are all gusseted, see that? So they'll support a bunch of weight. But they're actually aluminum, so they're light, but the guy can bring them over right in here and just plop them in. And then a guy could throw, I don't know, side-by-sides, motorcycles, lawn equipment, whatever you want on one side, or you could split them up, a couple on each, whatever you need to do, but you can really maximize the storage that way, you know? got the new charging whirler belt on here. I've been so busy, I don't even think I let you guys know what kind of happened with this the last time. But basically, you can see here the power steering pulley walked forward and started grinding on the gearbox over here. And when that walked forward, that threw the power steering belt, which then got into the Pro Charger belt. And when that came blowing apart, it really caused a mess. Took off the charging whirler, which of course is a water pump. I've already cleaned all this wiring up, but all of the fan wiring was in a ball. Ripped all of this out. You can see kind of the aftermath of the 
coolant soaked belts and stuff like that took the lower rad hose and everything so after the first maybe 45 seconds i had no water pump no charging whirler no power steering no fans nothing on this car which obviously is not good for it got really hot 240 i think it got up to like 246. i don't see any water in the oil so the head gaskets might be okay my biggest concern right now is it got leaned out 35 times maybe more i don't know every time the fuel cut off from fuel slosh it got really lean so that's my biggest concern but i'm getting everything kind of put back together ready to jump into the compression test right now so the guys just finished knocking out the double wide over here they're going to jump right into the xlt which is the lift that you've seen before. If you wanna see the full assembly on this thing, we did a video on it previously if you haven't seen it. I'll put a link down in the description for you. Just click on it and shoot you right over to that one. But this is the one that's probably gonna be over in the corner over here. I'm just gonna to try to stay out of these guys' way. We're gonna do some more work on independence. Plus, we gotta find batteries for the rigs that, you know, put on these. That'd be nice. Well, fillers, not so much good news in here. We've got between 145 and 150 pounds per cylinder, except number six. It's not wanting to party. In fact, I have absolute zero. Double checked the gauge, swapped it around, made sure. Valve train's moving, bore scoped it, looks okay. Valves are moving, not quite sure. Rings are completely gone, or we've got a bent valve, but that is not good for this engine, most likely that is going to have to come out but the show must go on so i'm going to keep working on the fuel system and i'm going to throw on some new tires and wheels kind of a different setup here give you guys a hint at the next event that i'm hoping to take this car on gonna to have to figure out the engine though i'm going to pull it out and refresh it maybe this is the point where we put in forged crank and a couple other goodies or I might just have to go with some sort of crate motor because I just I don't have the time at this point uh, to even get these parts in. I'm not sure that I can, even if I started ordering now. So that's going to be an issue. But give me a couple minutes here. I'm going to throw some different wheels on see what you guys think. your hint fellers and it's pretty obvious I've got to admit but I am liking this look tremendously it's Hoosier drag radials in the rear those are 275 5015s with billet specialty wheels and then you've got 27 4.5 15s up front just test fitting right now I have to get longer wheel studs. Usually the studs will come all the way out. I don't have that right now. And one of these is snapped off on the other side anyway. So we're gonna get that addressed. It's pretty soon, hopefully. I got the, I got it unbolted right now, but all the relays are plugged back in. Put a couple gallons in it. We're hot. Let's see if this thing will fire up and Run on seven. <laughs> Weird, the battery's dead.
moving the XLT. I'm gonna try it over in the corner first. And that way a guy can kind of just come in at an angle right onto the lift here. Maybe like that. Ish. I kind of see from back here. Yeah, maybe like that. Maybe a hair this way so I can get around the front there. Exhaust on this rig really hangs down. The headers are all beat in too, but basically, right when the tire is hitting the ramp, it's not getting to it quick enough to get over that there. So, we're going to find a piece of wood or something, which is really common when you're getting on the trailers with lowered cars too. They snag lies up over here. So, we can get this up and over and into here. And then I know exactly the car I'm going to put there. And also there. And I got one you guys haven't seen a lot of. We're going to try to dig out of the tree row and stick underneath here too. We're going to lift this one up just a little bit here. Just so I can show you this exhaust clamp. I'm going to have to fix it. I thought it would sneak onto this one a little bit, but the rate of approach must be the same. But I'll just have to fix that clamp or turn it around because I think the bolts are just hanging down. And that's what's catching on the edge basically but that fits really nice on the standard lift so that's the culprit right there i think i can just loosen these and twirlize it and i can get a quarter inch out of there pretty easy but you can see how many times this has just been bottomed out and the headers are all beat up and then i got the drip trays in they come with these because well this one drips a lot that power steering it's going to have to be fixed later or sooner. the snowbird, my dad's Buick. Got to bring these guys inside, you know. I have big plans for both of them. It's going to be a while till I get to them. So we'll just send them up top to the second floor. And I'll show you here in a minute. We're going to have still a ton of room down here. Bring the daily in and out. Or we can even do a project under here. But I'm going to go grab another pickup real quick. And we'll set that underneath for now. The room under here is incredible. I could have easily have just put the Harley in this space right here because you think you're losing this because the lifts are together, but you, you gain all this space actually. So I could put a Harley here and another vehicle, but I don't have anything else that runs or has a battery in it at the moment. That actually almost didn't even start. But here is the Ranger that's going to be in a lot of danger. Might have already have happened actually. Hopefully I didn't wreck it. I don't know. It leaves me a lot of room yet. The kind of how I got this one angled, I can easily pull in a rig over here. Still work on something. Actually, I know I could fit two cars in. So one there, one here. We can even sneak one in sideways back there, plus two more. So I think you counted. Well, how many cars do you think I can get in here? You can get 13 in here. 13 was the count. So we've got plenty of room as long as I can keep the clutter down. This design right here is the reason I chose Wildfire initially and why I continue to choose them. 
it goes all the way around the post and then the locking mechanism is underside which locks into these channels here not only is this extremely stable but it is physically impossible for this to you know come down on a guy other posts this is kind of an open area in here typically it's like a three-sided i don't know c channel and if you push on these they really get to rocking and shaking and i just i don't want to take any chances especially when it comes to a feller's life so you guys have seen that before that's really nice because you can take a four post and basically turn it into a two post but you still get the stabilities so if i wanted to roll that under the frame here i can lift the car pull the axles do brakes rear end whatever but the two front tires are still on the ramps and it's really really stable and you can slide that air jack wherever you want of course it just slides up and down the rails and I've been able to do anything and everything with a four post. Even removing boxes and cabs, just lift this up, take the vehicle under, strap it on and lift her up. Well, thanks guys for coming down. Appreciate it so much. Thanks, this was Derek. a lot of fun. You guys really got after it today. They threw up three lifts. I kind of just rolled around, put wheels on, mowed grass, I don't know. But you guys killed it. I'm so appreciative. This is amazing. I never thought that I would have this kind of hardware in the shop. And the amount of room that it gives us, I mean, there's a lot of room for activities in here. So thank you very much. We appreciate it. So thanks, Derek. And thanks to all of you guys, the subscribers that have continued to help us grow by buying our lifts, calling in, asking questions, and continuing to support us as our company grows. Link down below. So if you guys want to check it out, you can just click on that, go over there. And also don't forget there's that other link down there to the XLT build as well, if you want to see that one up close. And these guys are great with questions. Give them a call, shoot them an email. They'll help you out if you have height or questions on measurements or heights or whatever it may be, they'll get you squared away. So thanks again, guys, Thank appreciate you. it. Well, it's actually the next morning. We were up late just kind of cleaning and putting stuff back. But I promised you guys a little shop tour, so we'll do that. You've pretty much seen everything, but I'll give you some insight on what a failure is thinking will add into here you know so right when you come through the door here got a little sink water that's been really nice i've never had uh running water before and it doesn't have any hot water it just kind of comes in here but guy can maybe put a little hot water heater up here someday we've got the power panel and everything like that uh, for the shop this was just upgraded because the other one we didn't have enough juice to run the lights and stuff like that. I reuse these lights. These are the old lights that used to hang up in the center, but now those are just over there in the corner. And the thought was when a feller has a lift over here and the hood's up or anything like that, we're getting some horizontal luminance, you know? Tools will probably go here, I'm guessing. And I'll probably throw in a little card table or something over here. This will kind of be the break area once I get it cleaned up. Back over here, it'll probably end up being two more storage cabinets, like that one way over there. I got those at Sam's Club with a coupon, and they were really, really cheap, but they're pretty flimsy. I mean, they'll work just for chemicals and stuff like that. And then I got a matching bench. I already got this pegboard here. Might as well just scooch this in here. You know, we can bang on stuff and probably just use it more for storage. Probably not gonna put much behind here because I gotta be able to walk down here, hung up some pedal cars, maybe hang some cords and things like that. Might do the same with this pegboard. You can kind of hide it behind the vehicles and whatnot. And I was gonna put all my storage racks right here but we learned to get onto the lift, you really gotta, you know, swing in. So this is probably gonna be it here. These are those storage racks. Like I say, they're pretty, they're pretty chintzy. They're just uh, whatever, but it'll work for now. There's all the independence parts there. I gotta make some sort of rack for all my dollies now. So I got 12 of them, but with the pins in, it's the perfect distance from here to here. So I just got to pick a wall somewhere. I don't know, here, or maybe that's what I hang back there. Just hang all the dollies. 
someday I'll get to that. Had the electrician, Daniel, he's an awesome guy. He ran this outdoors for me for my motorhome. And then we added 220. I got another welder. I got a wheel in here. I think it'll go in the center. Uh, all this stuff can run off of this outlet. A 220 welder will come in here. I got 220 there. We ran an outlet outside for my battery charger. Guy can never have a battery. And then we got a line up there for another security light we're adding and cameras. And then we've got a light outside here already and a camera up there. So that's already done. And that's what these lights are. We can turn on just half or the other half or over there. And then of course the fans themselves are also on a switch. But I mean, that's really it guys. It, it looks bigger than it really is. It's 40 by 60, which is only 10 feet. It'd be 10 by 400 square feet more than the other shop. So from here to here back, it just looks so much bigger because we don't have that upstairs engine room area and kind of that wasted space where those steps were. But it does open up quite a bit. So we'll have plenty enough room to bring in a project here and bring in a project here and just gonna start filling up with parts. That's gonna do it guys. Thanks for watching. I appreciate you all very much. Stay tuned because now that we're finally moving in, things are gonna start happening really quick around here.